turístico que va desde Punta Cana al municipio de Miches y se detuvo en el destacamento policial para ir al baño en una estructura construida de blot, madera y zinc. Tenemos también que un hombre mata a su pareja a varias cuchichadas y una multitud trata de lincharlo. Miguelina Tagracia Martínez Morel, de 31 años, fue ultimada por su concubino Jesús Minaya Torre, de 21 años, que recibió una golpiza de una multitud que respondió indignada. Tenemos también que condenan y fortalecen la provisión en el Gran Santo Domingo. El informe indica que durante el encuentro celebrado en el Salón de Consejo Superior Policial, el jefe de la policía realizó un diagnóstico de la seguridad ciudadana donde mostró los puntos positivos del que accionan policial en cuanto a la prevención de crímenes y delitos. Y de esta manera, queridos amigos, llegamos al final de su programación Noticias en Español ABS. Juana de los Santos estuvo con ustedes. Pasen buenas noches y que Dios les bendiga a todos. Hi, I am Ashley Joseph, Livestock Officer in the Ministry of Agriculture, with a message to livestock owners. Free roaming livestock are having a negative impact on our environment. It is illegal to have untethered animals roaming in Antigua and Barbuda. Livestock owners caught allowing the animals to roam untethered could be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. If we work together to develop a professionally managed livestock industry, everyone will benefit. Increased food security, more beautiful countryside, enhanced tourism product, safer roads, happier farmers and residents. This message is brought to you from the Environmental Awareness Group and the Ministry of Agriculture. It was produced with the support of USAID. Hurricanes can be dangerous. Listening to the hurricane warning message and planning ahead can reduce the chances of injury or major property damage. Know your emergency shelters. Have disaster supplies on hand. Protect your windows. Trim back branches from trees. Check into your home and auto insurance. Make arrangements for pets and livestock. Develop an emergency communication plan. Contact the National Disaster Office for the closest shelters at 462-4742 or 464-8456. You may also email us at nodsanu at gmail.com or Facebook. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Information, Broadcasting, Telecommunications, Science and Technology. is brought to you by the Ministry of Information, Broadcasting and Telecommunication and ABS Radio and Television in collaboration with Sinke Production. Life is not a game. Drive responsibly. The first segment of the ABS Evening News is sponsored by ABI Bank Limited. Banking shouldn't interrupt your way of life, so ABI Bank Limited has integrated it into your day and put banking in the palm of your hand. Mo Banking allows me to check my account balance, my transaction history, or even transfer money instantly from my savings account to cover checks, all from my cell phone. I can pay my bills on the move, on my terms, in my own time. Mo Banking gives me options. No long lines and plenty of time to do the things I love to do. Mo Banking, banking on the move. Sign up at any Abbott location today.
Good evening, it is Sunday, the 30th day of September 2012. I'm Alex Dickerson with ABS Evening News. In the headlines this evening, the Prime Minister wants developed countries to lend a hand with the economic slowdown. And the nation joins original effort to encourage entrepreneurship and job creation. Those are the headlines now for the news in detail. Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, Dr. Naomi Baldwin Spencer, called for assistance from developed countries to deal with the effects of five years old economic slowdown. In his address to the United Nations General Assembly, Prime Minister Spencer says that unfortunately, Antigua and Barbuda is among small and developing states that have yet to see significant improvements since the downturn started some five years ago. He says that while the government had tried to curtail the effects of the country's fragile economies, it must be said that the small Twin Island state needs greater cooperation, flexibility and inclusion from developed countries. GDP can no longer be the criterion used when accessing concessionary financing and other international financial reliefs. Instead, mechanisms should be put in place that take into consideration a host of other elements, including fragility of economies. Mr. President, we are still in a crisis, a crisis of confidence in global governance and the institutional capacity for managing the international financial systems, international trade, and international development policies. We are also living in the era of globalization, where cooperative collectives and not ambitious and selfish empires must be the order of the day in international financial governance. believes that a privileged few should not be allowed to make financial decisions that impact the socio-economic livelihood of millions without regard for the excluded majority. Spencer made clear that all countries should be equal on such matters. My government calls on the developed and OECD countries to guarantee that their response approach to international tax matters involves improved international cooperation on tax issues through comprehensive and supportive frameworks that ensure the involvement and equal treatment of small jurisdictions like Antigua and Barbuda without the nuances of inappropriate branding as tax havens. The professional organization for women on Antigua power is of the view that Dame Gwendolyn Tung, who passed on Friday, has left a legacy for women both locally and regional to emulate. It is said that the late daughter of the soil made an immeasurable contribution to the development of families and the nation as she championed the cause of women. President of Power, Digital Isaac Arundel, described Dame Gwen Dung, who started the women's desk, a remarkable woman and sees her as a national icon. I am very happy that we gave her as power. We gave her her flowers a few years ago. In 1999, she was selected among our 12 women of the 20th century. And uh, as I said in another medium, I have her ranked up there with Nellie Robinson. And um, Power is proud to have been associated in that way with her. Um, I would call her like a free power woman because all the things that she managed to get done and you know the things that she believed in, things that she advocated are really qualities that power advocates now. And so she was a feminist even though she might not have called herself a feminist because she was always in the vanguard of making things better for women, whatever their station in life. So power mourns her passing and power salutes her. As an icon. The genius of Gwen Tong is that she was a family woman. She was for marriage and children and so on and she was for independence as well. She made her own money, she spent her own money, she you know she built a career um, and in an age when she would have been growing up in a traditional time when women were the, the, the second class citizen, the background person, she was not that at all. She was out front, she was blazing that trail, but still there was enough of the traditional in her that she could nurture a family and build a family while she built herself. And I think that is the example that I would want women, not only in Antigua Barbuda, but regionally, internationally, to emulate, that you don't have to give up one to have the other. They're not mutually exclusive.
It just makes you a better human being. It is expected that Dame Gwen, who was a former senator, will be afforded an official funeral.